Welcome back. In my first video about my composting toilet, which you can watch by clicking the link above, I reviewed my toilet, but today I'm going to show you the most intimidating part, changing it. Before we get started, I've made sure to link all the products that I'm talking about today in the description below. Make sure to comment below with any additional questions you may have about the toilet or the process itself. And of course, hit the like and subscribe button if this content is helpful and you want to see more of it. There are two ways to tell when a toilet needs to be changed. First is simply by opening the chamber door, looking down in, seeing how full it is. The second way to tell is when your agitator is getting hard to turn. Mine's getting hard to turn, so it's time to change. Before we empty, Nature's Head recommends that you wait six to eight hours after your last use before you empty the toilet. Your most recent use will not be broken down after six to eight hours. However, it will be dry enough, so you will be safe to dump. For a single person, I was able to go just under two months without having to empty the toilet. So we are going to take the toilet outside to empty and refill and here's how you take it off the base. First, you loosen these black knobs. There is one on each side. Next, you would remove your urine bucket. However, I have a urine diverter, so you just simply disconnect. I'm going to put it on some toilet paper so it doesn't touch the floor. And then we disconnect the power and the venting. And finally, you just lift up and slide up off the L brackets. Now that we're outside, make sure you have gloves because at the end of the day, we are still dealing with human waste. There could be spills and you don't want to touch that. Next thing you want is a 13 gallon trash bag that's going to fit right over the rim and we're just going to turn over and dump. So we're going to remove the head just by these latches on the side. Okay, I'm going to turn this around and show you. There's one more part at the back. When you lift it up, you can slide it sideways and the top comes off. Just like that. Nice and easy. Once your trash bag is over the rim, you can go ahead and turn it over and dump it. I'm just not going to show that part. Okay, so I've got my bag of waste, which this, by the way, is a hold-on bag. They're fully compostable bags, so I thought they'd be great having compost in a compostable bag. They don't fit all the way around the rim, but we're all set. Thankfully, nothing happened. We're all, we're all good and it poured nice and easy. So that bag will go to the dumpster. Let's talk about cleaning, or rather not cleaning. Nature's Head actually recommends that you do not clean between emptying and refilling with a new composting material. There is good bacteria in here right now that's been building and growing since the last time I filled it up that is helping everything break down. And if I were to get in there and scrub it all out, then I would be starting from scratch. So they say, leave it as it is and go ahead, just fill it up with more composting material. If you do choose to clean, clean only with natural cleaners or the vinegar water mix that Nature's Head recommends. Cleaning with any chemicals will actually prevent that good bacteria from breaking up and will interfere with the composting process. I did have to clean one part of the head of my toilet. There was one part right near the chamber door where some solids were sticking on their way down into the basin. And so I used the vinegar water mix that Nature's had suggested to go ahead and clean that up. For your composting element, you have two options. You have peat moss and you have coconut core. If you go with peat moss, peat moss is cheaper. Um, but it has to be regular or organic. I'm going to be using coconut core, which is a little bit more expensive, a little bit hard to find, but when I purchased my toilet, the person who was selling me the toilet had a bunch left over. So once that runs out, I'm gonna go ahead and replace with peat moss. I've linked both peat moss and coconut core in the description below, so you can check out those options and see the prices. The setup is similar no matter which one you choose. If they come dry, you need to just add a little bit of water at a time to re-moisten that composting material. Get it damp, make sure it's nice and crumbly, but don't get it wet and soupy. Coconut core comes in this giant brick, which I ended up sawing down. It's a pretty hard material to begin with. Um, I sawed it down into pieces so it would be easier to add a little at a time to make sure I'm not making too much or too little. 
We want to go ahead and rehydrate our composting material in a different container. I'm using a bucket and then we will slowly add it into the basin a little at a time. If you're wondering how much composting material you need to make, go ahead and turn your agitator bar so it's horizontal and you need to have enough so it meets that agitator bar in that horizontal position. This is coconut core, comes in a huge giant brick and this is what I sawed it down to. Hydrating the coconut core takes some time because it comes in such a thick block. Continue to add water and give the coconut core some time to absorb that water. Then fluff it with a small shovel or similar garden tool. Once the hydrated layer has been broken off of the brick, add more water and continue until the entire brick is broken down. It took me 20 to 30 minutes to get all of the coconut core hydrated and ready for the toilet. And just like that, you can see that it's level with the agitator bar in a horizontal position, so we're all good. Now that it's mostly clean, I can show you that I was getting some solid sticking down here and up here. And now we can just put it right back together. Because we modified the toilet to connect to the gray tank, we had to lift it up off the floor so that this tubing would fit under the toilet. So now it sits on a base and that makes it a little bit more unsteady, especially because I took off the front section that held the bucket that made it more stable. So our simple solution was cutting some wood and shoving it under there and tightening these parts down over it. Um, it does come loose every once in a while, especially after we drive, so I just have to tighten everything up. Honestly, cleaning it and emptying it was much easier and much less intimidating after I did it for the first time. I was expecting it to be a little bit harder, but especially now that I know that you don't need to clean the base so you keep that good bacteria in it, it, <laughs> it makes it so much easier and quicker. Let me know in the comments if this was easier or harder than you thought. Maybe if this helped sway you towards a composting toilet. If I can sway one person towards a composting toilet, I'd be very happy. Don't be intimidated by this toilet. It's a lot easier than you think. Hi, Matthew. Look in the box, ain't so bad. No, no, no. Mm-hmm.